Hello everyone, Mr. Kenor here. Uh, today we are going to be in the model library going all the way down to the bottom building number 16 turn. Eventually we're going to build the lunar rover but this is part one so we're going to be building our turn. There are building instructions here. These are what I'm going to be following as you can follow along with me here. All right I'm going to go pretty quick so you can just fast forward um, rewatch any parts that you need to. So we're going to put this here in the middle. And uh, hopefully by watching you can get any of the trickier parts that there might be when uh, we are doing this. Right, so we're going on either side here, like here and here. Taking this one with the circle right in the middle. And then these two with the axle holes go right on the sides like that. Securing everything into place. All right, this is where we take all four of these going right across, just right across the center, just like that. Take our Technic brick, put it on the end here. And then again, we're gonna take a whole bunch of pieces so we got that brick, another brick. Um, we've got our uh, ball and socket joint right there. And then those go around. Then we are going to put one more of the plates followed by one of the bricks. Followed by two more. We're just going straight up like that, all the way up. All right, now we're gonna take our motor. You'll notice how it bends, so you can put it just right up next to it, just like this. So it's kind of bent backwards like that. All right, we're gonna take two of our black pins, just on either side, just like that. And then we're gonna sandwich it in on another one. You might need to like wiggle them, but they should sandwich in like that. And then this is gonna go right on top of our motor, kind of like that. Okay, then we're going to take our green L, I think it's called a bent lift arm, and just make sure that you're holding it the right side, so not like this, but like this, so holding it on this side, just like in the instructions, and then one right up at the top here, okay? Now, you've got this hole in the middle here, that's where the top one goes, and then it's just going to go in and then you're gonna be able to see right through into the motor that's right there. Just make sure, see how mine's a little gap? Just make sure that we're like really pushing things down, make sure that everything's getting locked into place. Okay, you're gonna take another black pin so it's sticking out here like that, and then you're gonna take this green connector piece and you're gonna put it on the end like that. Okay, our hub is gonna come on facing this way, so the button kind of facing this way uh, with the, like where we'll be able to plug in over here. Now we are going to take, this is the motor, we're gonna take it across and then we're going to secure it in place. We just wanna make sure that it doesn't interfere with any of our gears as it's driving. So it's gonna come across and then get tucked in nicely here. So it comes across, we just put those over them. We tuck it in nicely. All right, and then this we're going to flip upside down and then we're going to put our um, plates on. Now this is all upside down, right? Here's our stud, so it's upside down. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to put that blue brick right here at the end. Followed by two of our Technics with the pinholes. Make sure that the pinholes are facing on either side here and not up and down this way. They should be sticking out on either side. That is important. And then this blue piece goes here and this stays open. All right, we're gonna take our length six axle and we are going to put that yellow bushing right here on this side. It doesn't matter. Eventually we're gonna make sure that it's flush here, but if not, if it's sitting here, that's okay. Cause then we're gonna put this uh, bevel gear on and then what you can do is like on a table and then just push all the way down. And there you go, see now it's nice and flush. 
Okay, this is gonna go through those Technic pinholes. So you've got our bushing here, and then you got the empty space right here. Okay, on this other side, we're gonna take this trans blue wheel and just push it all the way here. And you know, even if you like accidentally push this through as you're putting that in, again, you can always go down to a table and push all the way down until it's flush again. Now, just make sure that you try to leave a little bit, like you should be able to kind of spin this. We don't want too much friction. So just make sure you're able to kind of move this around. Okay, put that down. Then we're gonna take one more Technic brick, one in from the end. So one hole and then our pin, one hole and then our pin. And then in the middle is gonna go this um, axle, pin axle connector. And it's called a friction. Let's see how it can spin around. These ones can't spin, this one spins freely. All right, and then we are going to close it like that, sandwich it shut. And then we're gonna take one more of those frictionless pins right here on the end here. So you got frictionless pin and then this pin here. All right. And then on that pin, we're gonna put the small uh, bevel gear. So these ones are both the small ones and we still got the big ones over here. So this is the larger one. These were the smaller ones, okay. Now we are going to take, these are the length four axles. They've got the stop at the end. So the stop goes into this face. So see how the spikes are facing one way? Not this one on this face. Let's push it all the way in like that. And then this is gonna go, so if we're holding this here, this goes one, two, three. So as it sticks out, you get this pin in between these two, okay? And you'll know you've done it right because on this, we're gonna put this larger bevel gear in. And now if I turn this one, it should turn both of these. Or if I turn this one, they should all be turning. They should, the gears should be meshing together. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, you have that open space on this piece here and you have our gears here. This tan piece is gonna mesh gears with this. So we're gonna just set it right down on top and then you'll see if I spin this one, now they're all spinning. If I spin this one, even this one's spinning. So we set that down. We're gonna take our last orange piece and we're gonna put it across here. So that's gonna make sure that this doesn't fall off. And then we're going to attach this into the motor. So remember the motor is in this middle hole here. So this is gonna go into the motor. You might need to like, kind of move it around, but just make sure that it's in. And then you wanna make sure that this is sitting on top. So you don't wanna put it in uh, where this is below. Although, no, you, yeah, you can't do it that way because what, what we wanna do is we wanna spin it. So put these white pieces in facing you and then turn it down like this, okay? And then our last step is we are going to take Sorry, not our last step, our last step with the gear, the bevel gears. We're just gonna push it through. It doesn't matter which way, because then we, we can flip it, but it's gonna come here, and it's gonna go through the last hole that we have here and out the other side. And then we're gonna take our smaller of the three tires. So we should have two big tires and then a small tire, and that small tire comes here in the end. Just make sure that you do that flush side in like that, okay? And it's gonna be locked in place because now it's in the motor and because the motor's not spinning, these will all get locked in place. But see how it can turn like this? All right, last step before we're finished is these, you take the flat side and we just put them right into these frictionless um, pins that we put in earlier, those frictionless axle pins and see how it can just move freely just like that. And there you go, we have our turning robot uh, the cool thing with our turning robot is that it can both drive forward and turn using just one gear. Okay, so here's our program that we're going to be running for our turn robot. So we have it turning uh, counterclockwise at a speed of four for two seconds, and then it's going to switch and the motor is going to spin clockwise for two seconds. And what this is gonna do is as the motor is spinning counterclockwise, these gears are gonna be turning this wheel counterclockwise going this way. Then when it spins 
clockwise, what actually happens is it catches this bevel gear, and this bevel gear is actually going to come across this way. So when it's here, it's pushing on here so it can't spin anymore. So because it can't move any further, now all of that rotational energy is getting transferred to the wheel. But once we can spin it this way, it's gonna keep going, it's gonna go this way, and then it gets stopped by this, and then that rotational energy gets transferred to this wheel. So you can't just say, oh, I wanna turn right and then left and then right and then left. No, it only turns in one direction, and it only turns going counterclockwise. So this robot cannot drive backwards. There's no reverse for this robot. It drives forward, and then it can turn in one direction. So when I hit play, it goes forward, and then you'll see that flip up. And so let's do that again. We'll kind of go this way so that you can see it a little bit better. We drive it, and then when it goes clockwise, it flips up and then catches. And so the only time that energy gets transferred to this tire is when this is caught. So if I hold it in my hand, notice that it didn't, it's not turning or anything. It's just the wheel going one way and then the other. The thing that causes it to turn is this piece right here. If we didn't have this piece, we would just kind of have like a spinning. Let's see what happens if I remove that piece. See, it's now it's just going forward and forward. And that's because we have enough friction on the ground where it's going this way that this gear is hitting. So when it's going counterclockwise or clockwise and it's hitting here, this gear is actually causing it, is stopping that rotation. So it's a pretty interesting build. It's pretty interesting how it works, um, how we're able to achieve rotation just with one motor. But again, you are limited to only forward driving and it turning. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, check out my next uh, video so you can learn how to add on the attachments and have the Luna Rover.